am Kidilia Janku. I am a performing artist, but I'm also an MFA candidate at the Maryland Institute College of Art. And what I've done is bring all that I am into one place through curatorial practice. My forte is traditional African dance and drum. Indigo is in itself magic. It's magical because it does these things that, that just speak to you, that call to you. It's magical because it has such a rich and dynamic history that goes in so many directions. You see it in the Tareg desert people, where the men are the ones who wrap their faces, wrap their heads in huge turbans, and wrap their faces in indigo cloth, calling themselves the blue people because that protects them. It's believed that the indigo protects them as they cross the desert. It's magical. The Egyptian pharaoh had a sail on his ship and his ship alone that was blue, telling people to part the ways. But it gets different. It gets different because indigo was introduced to America by Eliza Pickney. She needed a new crop, and that cash crop was indigo, bringing slavery and changing the waterways and changing the commodity. Well, indigo magic is an exhibition because I'm in an art school, and that is my thesis study. It's an exploration of indigenous uh, content and the way it shows up in African American art forms. It uses indigo as a lens to focus on the connections between Africa and the Americas. As a color, as a dye, as a commodity, indigo has had fast impact on art and culture worldwide and it suggests and dignifies connections to so many different places, India, Egypt, oh, mummies, and you know, it's just magical, magical. And um, it's got this mystique, it's been used as medicine. It's been used through history and shown up in so many ways. Even in Europe, the warriors, it was called the warrior's herb because the warriors painted their faces believing that that blue hue would protect them in battle. Indigo magic, it's a group show. Envision a collection of works, a collection that is blue, not necessarily in color, but a collection that is blue in spirit as well. The artists have been chosen because they're steeped in a regal, majestic blue, their work is, their visions of indigo, maybe as a trade commodity or strong African content. The artists include Ernest Croma. He is a living legacy. He is the oldest of these, and he's, he has much work that is inspired by his travel to Africa. Larry Poncho Brown, he is one of the most re renowned artists, but has much work that also inspired by his travel to Africa. This piece right there has people pointing and moving in the path of indigo. Karen McAdoo Clark, also inspired by her journey to Africa, now uh, an excellent potter, but now hand builds and does things that, that are um, right there, steeped in her journey to Africa. Karen Buster, these visions of her were hers before she ever visited the continent of Africa. And once she got there, she found out that what had been coming through her was actually what she would see once she arrived. This photographer has indigo all the way there. These are indigo cakes processed in Africa. That is the side of a village where indigo is dyed, and then in a marketplace where indigo is sold. Sankofa Dance Theater, with newly commissioned work entitled Indigo Magic, will be part of the, the experience, because I believe that you need to bring people into museums, not only by the art on the wall, but also by interacting with people and, and having public programs. So this Baltimore Girls, it's runway upcycled denim. So you take old stuff and you make it new again and make it funky fly. <coughs> Tie-dye workshops so that young people can touch what, and the experience and, and feel it not only through the, their breath, their heart, their mind, their body, their spirit, and, and take a little something home as well. Gallery talks with some of uh, 
Baltimore's own professionals, Chesia Strand does humanistic studies, examples of indigo tradition through her writing, Kokava Selassie uh, work experience, how uh, African art shows up in Toni Morrison work, and then the last was um, Mr. Bingham, who is has a vast collection of indigo and uh, and African artifacts. So the place is the Frederick Douglass Isaac Myers Museum, because indigo has been such a trade commodity. This museum sits on a pier that uh, slaves were brought into. It sits on the pier where Douglas, uh, Frederick Douglass and Isaac Myers both experienced Baltimore in a new and different kind of way and experienced America in a new and different kind of way, just as indigo has changed the lives of many that it's touched. And so. Thank you.